Okay, so um, what am I supposed to do? To, to concur with you? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Yeah, okay. let's get past that and just go into uh, going after the documents and stuff. After the documents, what do you mean? It, getting him to elaborate on the documents to okay. prove the fraud. Okay. All right. So, Mr. McCaffrey, in your examination of my uh, purported mortgage documents that you have in front of you, um, you have evidence that my uh, promissory note is is not with Bank of America. That's what you're saying, and it is actually with Bank of New York Mellon. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, the last page of the document were typically the – are stamped in three different places. Most of the time, they are stamped on the last page because that's why they provide a large space for stamps for assignments. Your note stops at Homecomings Financial Network unless Bank of America provides you with the document that is true and correct certified and has a Bank of America stamp on it, it will not go any farther than, in my estimation, than Homecomings Financial. Okay. Because the note has not followed their assignments that they are filing. Okay. So if I, if I understand you correctly, the notice of trustee sale in this matter shows that the beneficiary is Bank of America and not Bank of New York Mellon. That's correct. Therefore, would it be your opinion, sir, that the current notice of trustee sale sh is null and void? It's uh, not null and void. It's the beneficiary is listed uh, incorrectly, uh, and it has to be pointed out in the court that uh, Bank of America, unless they can show standing, which uh, in my official duties is looking at these documents, they will find that uh, this loan is in a trust. Uh, the people that own your particular loan are individuals, pension funds, hedge funds. Those people are called certificate or bondholders, and those certificate or bondholders have certain voting rights. Looking at a pooling and servicing agreement that we're going to locate for you, uh, Bank of America has no standing. So if Bank of America has no standing in this matter, then why would they have commenced a non-judicial foreclosure of my property? Object objection, Your Honor. It's two different matters. We, uh, we agree that we do not have standing in this matter and therefore move this court to dismiss us. We do concur with the plaintiff on that. Your Honor, I would first concur with... Um, with the uh, defendant's counsel, they do not have standing in this matter because they committed fraud to um, to fraud to commence this uh, non-judicial foreclosure. Okay, and remember, this is not when you say this matter, that means this. You're getting the two confused, and that's dangerous in court. Okay. Very dangerous. Okay. Well, he just concurred that he did not that they do not have standing in this in matter. In this matter, this matter. What matter? <laughs> right now, right the this court okay. we're in. Okay, no. that they do not have standing in this non-judicial. No, no, this uh, this is about as judicial as it gets. <laughs> this matter is you're suing them. Do not confuse the non-judicial foreclosure with the court case you're in. It's two different issues. You said we don't have standing in this matter. I concurred, therefore it must be dismissed, and we're out of here. And you got a problem. Okay, why don't you say my part for me? Okay. Uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Caffrey has given testimony to this court that the evidence uh, establishes a prima facie case. The defendants do not have standing in the non-judicial foreclosure matter. Uh, the defendants do have standing in this matter because I'm suing them for the fraud they've committed upon myself and the court in the non-judicial matter. Uh, also for the criminal acts that have deprived me of my property and due process, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I, I move this court pursuant to the evidence to go ahead and make a decision concerning the non-judicial foreclosure that you don't want them to say to this. What? It, 
Yes. Uh, pursuant to the current evidence uh, entered into this court, I'm going to dismiss with prejudice. And bailiff, could you please bring the uh, sheriff in to arrest? Okay, now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> dismiss with sense. prejudice and she'd lose. Yeah. Okay, you, you, you missed. Oh, oh. You missed the point. Well, you switched it on me, that's why. No, no, she became the plaintiff a long time ago. We, we switched this right. around. Okay, you're not going to dismiss. Now, what she moved the court is to, it refers to the non-judicial proceeding. See, I was trying to show her how she was getting the two confused. You can't do that in court. Okay, there's the matter, which would be the non-judicial proceeding. There's this matter, which would be what we're in right now. If you look at, at pleadings, a lot of times they'll say the court, and they're talking an all-encompassing concept of the court, the court system, this court, the other court, all courts. That's the court. Then there's this court with the C as, as a capitalized letter. The, when you're saying this court, it, this court right here, when I say the court, lowercase c, talking about the whole court system. Do not get these issues confused. Do not get this matter right here confused with the matter, the matter being the non-judicial proceeding. Okay. okay? You keep doing that, and that, that will kill you in court. All right, I'm going to lose those words, the matter, this matter. I won't even use them anymore. Okay. <laughs> um, I do have, I want to back up a minute. So, Mr. McCaffrey, if I understand you right, then it would be the actual certificate holders that would have to commence this non-judicial foreclosure action against my property? Yes, the trustee would have to provide to you certificate holders or bond holders or in a filing of a 10K, the true beneficiaries of uh, this particular loan. Um, and through a 10K filing uh, or an 8K filing, and also, if there's a 15D filing, that would tell me that the trust has been closed down, and therefore the insurance companies would have paid that trust off, and that would also eliminate Bank of America. Uh, it appears to me that Bank of America is what they're trying to do here is, is foreclose on your property. The loan's already been paid off, and they are now trying to foreclose, and then they will take it back at the highest bidding highest bidder, or take it back into the bank and then resell it at a much lower value. And Okay, just hold off on the questions, okay? We're trying to get yeah. through this. So um, in your case, the first thing that uh, I would question with Bank of America is the adjustable rate note that was provided as evidence number one. I don't see any Bank of America assignment on here. Without a Bank of America assignment, it stops right here. It stops with Homecoming's financial network because it does not match what they are recording, taking it out of MERS as the first beneficiary and placing it in Bank of America's hands as the beneficiary in the party and naming Bank of America in the notice of trustee sale as the beneficiary. In my eyes, uh, that is fraud. And that would be, in the court's eyes, fraud because they are not the true holder in due course. Now, the note holder in due course doesn't necessarily mean that when you hold the note that you are the owner of the note. The owner of the note or holder in this case, a week ago was UPS. And prior to that, it was the pilot for UPS who held it. And pr after that, it could have been an attorney that would hold that note. So uh, the true issue at hand here right now is Bank of America is listed as a trustee sale as the beneficiary. That's one problem. The filings are the biggest issue. All three filings filed on the same date, same time, same second. 
the court, in my opinion, cannot tell whether the substitution of trustee was filed prior to or after the notice of sale. There is absolutely no, I cannot tell, no way from the second that they are filed which document comes first. So in this particular case, you throw the note in there that has Objection, not Honor, Bank of America. Objection, Your Honor. It, uh, uh, it, no. it really doesn't matter what documents filed when. They, the, the, the order is incumbent on when they were signed and notarized, not necessarily when they were filed. Uh, filing is just a publication. Um, <laughs> Objection. Please, excuse me, please stop over there, would you? Objection, Your Honor. Um, the order of the documents is absolutely important because you have to have an assignment of deed of trust that assigns the right to the new trustee, which would be the okay, substitute. You wouldn't necessarily object. There's your witness. Okay. There's your expert witness. So can you elaborate for the, the court's benefit on why the defendant's incorrect? Okay. Um, Mr. McCaffrey, can you elaborate for the court's benefit as to why the defendant is incorrect? Yes. Uh, you'll notice on these documents that the county recorder's office does not put the second on there. But if you go to the county recorder's office, there is a reason why they put seconds on there. The reason for that is, is to make sure that what has happened in your particular case, you cannot tell the um, order in which these documents were filed unless you have seconds on there. How all three of these documents were recorded on the same date, same time, and same second, the court cannot make a determination, in my opinion, as to the validity of what document came first and what document was filed first. So therefore, you would, in my opinion, have an invalid foreclosure sale. Okay, Your Honor, uh, defense moves for leave of the court uh, to uh, put a stay on this proceeding for one week so that we can uh, correct the filings and we will have them filed in the correct order. <laughs> Um, that would be nice, Your Honor. But no, we no, can't. no, no, no. You got him. Okay, what I'm trying to point out, you got the guy right there. You ain't going to beat me. It ain't going to happen. Not you and not most attorneys. Don't get in there thinking you're going to beat that. No, 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 please. Don't get in there thinking that you're going to beat the attorney. When you already got somebody that can beat the attorney. Throw it all on him. Okay, just, just just stop me. You've got Bill right there. Let him do all this. You keep on trying to elaborate when, when you got him right there. Don't. It, it, it's a waste of time. And you guys need to know that. That's why you're hiring somebody like this. Use him. Do not waste that resource. Okay? Mm -hmm. So just move to ask him to clear it up. Okay. Uh, Mr. McCaffrey, um, after what the defendant has stated, um, could you uh, give your opinion of what uh, he stated? Yes. I, I completely understand what he's saying. The problem is, is you can't undo fraud. You can't go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice to rob a bank, take that money, and then... Uh, find out that you were caught, and then bring the money back to the bank and not be arrested and thrown in jail. Unfortunately, you can't do that in today's world. And it's the same thing when you record documents. You can't undo something that's already been done. Who, who's our microphone person? I need to ask a question. <coughs> okay. I, objection, Your Honor. Uh, we, there's no contention of, of fraud on behalf of our clients, it there there could have been an uh, innocent mistake. It happens. The <laughs> banks are very busy. 